Hello everyone, so I wanted to do an updated version of this video and this is like a video I've done two videos ago uh, back when I was just at Accenture. I want to do an updated one because I still get people that are asking me like how did you do this to this? Like what were you doing? What exactly did you do? Because a lot of times my video actually focuses on like what I did at that exact point in time but not exactly like the journey and how that worked out. Um, especially if you don't want to watch through like all the videos that I've done or if you just don't have the time and patience to go through the chronological order. Um, so what I did want to talk through is a little bit, I'm going to go skim a little bit earlier in my career, but like focus a little bit more on my Google side of the career, just because that's the newer part. If you wanted to get more of an in-depth conversation on what exactly I did on before Accenture and at Accenture. Okay. Um, the first thing is I'm going to just start with basics, basically like all the way from college. Uh, so first thing I do want to say is that, so I went to Boston University in... September 2014. Um, at first, I actually went to go to Questrom. Back then, it was School of Management for International Management Concentration. I ended up changing it. Honestly, people don't really declare their concentrations until later on anyways, but when you are actually applying, you do kind of ask, was like you do have to mention like what concentration you're interested in. At the time, I was like so interested in international business. And actually, one of the things is like, I was really interested in doing a dual major in computer science and business, but I felt like that's gonna be so difficult and I would rather just have a sense of what it's like as opposed to like actually dedicating my studies to it. Um, and I know like I'm not necessarily that good at it either, <laughs> which I found out later on when I was taking one of the coding classes. So uh, when I went to school, I did do like the basic introduction classes and um, all of the CES, like the arts and sciences, liberal arts requirements. Then after that, at a certain point, I was just like, hmm, I want to do a concentration where there's some kind of like finance, some numbers, there's some kind of tech involved which in that case I didn't even know what management information systems was until I did like the intro class to information systems that's when I found out like wow there's like this even ground where you can do both like tech and business and this was a class in the business school and that's actually like the class that kind of set my my career off because I was like ooh, this is a really cool class it was an 8 a.m. class okay so the fact that I liked it at an 8 a.m. class means that, okay, I should do something about this because I knew I wanted to do something in tech. I did not want to do it through computer science. And back then, I honestly did not know what else you could do other than computer science. And I did not want to be like a mechanical engineer, chem chemical engineer. It didn't seem like tech, which is what I wanted. Um, but I knew that I wanted to do something in tech and I felt like, okay, maybe I have to do a business role and get into tech that way. But at the same time, I do want to challenge myself and I want to get some technical experience and, and skills as well. And that's what I ended up doing was like information systems. So from there, I did a lot of like one-on-ones with concentration liaisons. I looked into what concentrations I want. So in the end, I did go for finance, management information systems, and strategy and innovation. So three concentrations. Normally, most people stick with one to two. I did three because a lot of them like cross over with each other. Um, but specifically for me, I did that because later on, I just knew finance because I like numbers. And honestly, finance in corporate world isn't actually finance. It's like accounting. If you want the true finance, you're going into like investment banking, hedge funds. And I, and I was like, that's not what I want to do really. Um, so in the end, I was just like, okay, well, I guess I can't do that. What I was really thinking was actually financial planning and advisory, uh, financial planning, which is exactly what I noticed that when I was doing my internship at DKNY, which is my freshman year internship, they had people that were in FPNA. I'm like, Ooh, this is interesting. I want to do that. Then I looked at it and I'm like, this is accounting. This is not financial planning. <laughs> this is not finance. I mean, it kind of is accounting and finance. It's just not what like people think when they learn finance in school, it's not the same thing. It's actually accounting. And most people come from like an accounting background too. Um, and later on, I actually did end up working with a lot of people in the accounting department for Workday Financials when I was at Accenture. So in the end, I was like, <laughs> I guess in the end, like they thought the finance background that I had on my resume for, for Accenture, they thought it was accounting, but it really wasn't. It was actually like strictly like investment banking kind of finance and all that. So when I was in college, I did a few internships that really shaped my career. So in this case, my junior year summer was a marketing data analytics consulting internship at, at uh, Analytic Partners in New York. And I really enjoyed it because that's where I really was able to join the two of tech 
and consulting. It wasn't truly like tech consulting. In this case, it was like data analytics consulting. And I still brought in some marketing knowledge in from my business background. But I was able to get to know like how it was like to do technical work, but at the same time do client facing work, which I liked. And it's actually very similar. Um, well, the first thing I want to do actually was to get a return offer. And I'm actually glad I didn't get one. They ended up saying I wasn't a team player because of a team project that I was doing. And this is like a difficult part to talk about because those two people that I was working with did not do any work. And then because I said that like I did the work, they were like, yeah, I'm not a team player. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that at least the two, pe the two people that I worked under in my project work like day to day, not just the, like the project that we had on the side. They were like, how did you not get a return offer? So I'm like, whatever. Um, but they basically said I wasn't a team player because the two others just weren't good enough or didn't do the work properly. And then I just went ahead and did it myself. And I'm like, I'm not just going to have this project fail just because I want to be a team player. I'm going to work with the team however I can, but it's also on them to do their work as well and to deliver because at the end of the day, we have to present our work and I didn't want to just present it and be like, yeah, we didn't do anything. The team player work is actually to do the work and be able to contribute to the team. So they weren't doing their part of the team. And because of the fact that I was doing their work, it was not whatever, basically it confirmed that I did not want a return offer from there. And then later on, I realized that that was actually 20, 30 K less than my starting salary at Accenture. So, oh my boy, I'm going to go get him. He's such a stinker. He literally took a poop and then he was crying to get let out. And now I'm stuck in the room with that same poop. <laughs> But yeah, so essentially I did not get a return offer from there. So I knew that, okay, I need to go crunch and keep on going for roles out there. So um, career fair came along. I got my role at Accenture. If you want more information, definitely check out this video. I'm not going to go into depth, that in depth because this focus is on career journey. Um, and then while I was at Accenture, the biggest thing was that I wanted to go into tech consulting because I wanted to try different tech and work with different people and in different industries. I did get to work with different industry, but I did not get to work with different tech. They immediately saw my resume and saw, oh, you have financials, you have information systems, you're going to go into work to financials. And majority of the time when we were looking at all the people that started out with us back then, they had something called Q Center where everyone goes there for orientation and training. And from there, that's why I was able to figure out like, oh, so-and-so got into this area. So-and-so is like just in the TDP program. I was going in for the technology development program. So I thought I was going to do that. Uh, unfortunately, they were like, no, you're in work to financials a week before. So I was like, okay, well, I'm stuck here now. So I ended up just going and I was like, okay, fine, I will do this. And I ended up liking the work. I just didn't like the fact that I couldn't choose where I wanted to go because I wanted to be able to go like, oh yeah, I'll try a work day. And then the next project I could do like, I don't know, Oracle or the next project I want to do like Salesforce. The next project I want to do product management or the next project I want to do digital marketing. But I couldn't do that. So unfortunately I wasn't able to do something like that. So that was actually the biggest reason why I ended up leaving. The second reason was that I got passed off for promotions and I did make a video over here going into a little bit more details, but basically long story short, a lot of times when it comes to consulting, they really promote based off of the priority work that you're working on. And if you just unfortunately got caught on this project that you just happen to be free at that very moment, they're going to put, put you on that project. And you sometimes like if you have no work, or you have like zero chargeability, they're going to put you on there. You can't just say, no, I don't want that project. You have to take the project. So um, unfortunately, a lot of times in consulting, that's what it ends up being is that it's all about luck. It's about like if you're the right person at the right time. There's a lot of cool projects that came out. But of course, I was always on the project that I was on, which I didn't really like. So they did say for... Two years, I was on a lot of projects, which I really liked. I learned a lot. I did a lot of my tech consulting work that I did, where you're working with clients, you're presenting to clients, you're doing a lot of demos, you're doing a lot of discovery questions, and you're implementing end-to-end, -end, and you're owning work streams. Three years in, that's when they were like, okay, Christine, we have this project that came out where we want to do AMS support. AMS support was essentially that, like, they're done, they're live on Workday, but they have all these, like, other enhancements and fixes that they want to make. 
um, but they need someone to help them with. So essentially you're like outsourced labor in some kind of ways. You're not actually doing like a full fledged implementation, which is like brand new. They're already live on there. They just like need some help. So I ended up doing that. Um, so essentially you're like support if they find like, Hey, we notice like this thing isn't working or like, Hey, we want to implement this new feature, um, which is not really a new feature. It's more like, Hey, we didn't have time to do this. Now we have time to do this. So that's what I was doing. And a lot of times these were all little tickets and you would always work through the tickets or the emails or calls. It was very difficult to be able to trace your impact because you're working on these tiny little tickets. And unfortunately, because it's just not high visible work, in general, it's a lot of, honestly, bitch work that it just doesn't have a lot of visibility compared to like the bigger projects out there. So unfortunately, I was just kind of stuck on there. And because this was a 50% project, which means I wasn't actually 100% on this, that in the end, they ended up like, it's tough because if you have 50%, you're trying to find another project that's 50%. So if you end up being completely done with a project, 100% and you drop to zero, you can do another 100% or you can do 250% or you can do 150%. For me, I'm only limited to just having another 50% or just not being chargeable. So during this time, there was a lot of times where I was just 50% for a while and I was just doing a lot of training. I ended up being like the second most trained person in the practice at Accenture, maybe even in the practice in general. But I just kept on going and I was like, okay, well, I have 50%, I'm just gonna do it. and. I did a lot of work on these AMS support work. However, it's just like I said, the delivery lead is not necessarily going to be able to look into every single ticket. They're not going to see all the work you're doing. They're going to basically just see, oh, this is the number of tickets you did, but they don't know the true impact because of how far away they are from the actual project. So in this case, that's why I wasn't able to capture the impact that I was able to do. I could say it, but at the end of the day, a lot of the actual work is really captured by the feedback that people give you. So it's tough because like the only feedback I can truly get is really from the client, but they don't really take that in consideration as much. Um, a lot of times it's really like you copy and paste what they say, but a lot of times it's a little bit awkward to ask for a client for specific feedback. So you're really relying on the actual people that you work with. And a lot of time this work is really siloed. So that's actually like one of two reasons that I ended up moving out of Accenture was that number one, I did not choose Workday Financials. Number two, I did not to get promoted. This is like at this point, two years in. First year in, I got promoted and honestly, I did have, oh my God, they're having some fun there. But the first year in, honestly, I definitely did see people that were, that started two, three years before me that were the same level as me when I came in. They were a little bit jealous of like, why did Christine get promoted and I didn't? So I had a feeling that like, you know, it's it's gonna catch up. If I get promoted really early, I'm gonna get promoted a little bit later this row, this time around. So. It just ended up happening in that kind of way. But at the same time, I did not have the best of luck with the type of project work I was doing. So those were the two reasons why I ended up going to Google. But also at the same time, the three things I was really looking for in a role was I want to work with people. So I don't want to be like heads down independent work and not be able to work with people. Um, so in that case, a lot of times ticket work is pretty much not working with people. Um, you're really just emailing people through the tickets or you're just like working through tickets. Um, number two, I wanted to be able to have a tangible impact on product in which in my case, I don't really have tangible impact on the product because we're implementing Workday. I'm not making Workday. I'm not the product manager of Workday. I don't even work at Workday. I am at Accenture implementing Workday for a client. So naturally all I am done, all I can do is the limitations of the current product. I can't say anything except for the client has to create a brainstorm and then hopefully gets upvoted and hopefully gets prioritized. That's literally all I could do. And the other one was I want to go work life balance. So with Accenture, I was able to work with people sometimes, depending on like the ticketing system didn't really work that way. I did get to uh, get work, good work life balance, but I did not get to be able to get tangible impact to the product. So I knew I had to go to a product based company. So in that case, I was actually looking at all these places and I applied to a bunch of places for product management. And in the end, I was like, hmm, well, you know, I had a few product management interviews. I did get an offer, but every time I always got like a low offer because of the fact that I haven't done product management related work or product management transferable skills, they were kind of taking a chance on me. At the same time, I was trying to transfer to do product management within Accenture. And if people know, 
Product management at Accenture is actually being a product owner. You're not truly being a product manager, you're just owning the user story. So you're working directly with engineers, you're trying to get the stories done, but you're not actually a product manager, you're more like a product owner. In some companies, product owners and product managers are the same. In some, they're different. And I wanted to do more of like the product manager work, not necessarily the execution of it. I want to do both, but uh, the part that I really wanted more was what the product manager would have done. So at the same time, I was like, okay, I actually was doing my interviews and at Google specifically, the first round was with the recruiter. Second round was with the hiring manager. And that's actually when I was like, I want to go into product management. Do you think that's something I could do? He said, yes, I, like he will help me go through that. And immediately I was like, wow, blown away. Um, the first thing was like, I was a little bit intimidated of asking something like this straight up in the interview, but I want to just straight up ask, is this something that can be done? And later on, when I found out that people do can, they, they can definitely move around within Google after I got into Google. So it is very possible. Um, it really depends on like the job landscape. Like right now, it's very difficult for everyone across the board, not necessarily Google, but everyone in general. So you're fighting across all these people that are laid off and they're trying to get a job. So generally, there's just more competition in general. So. For me specifically, I came to Google because I wanted to do all those three things that I just mentioned, work life balance, work with people and have tangible af impact to the product, which I was able to get in all three aspects. So in this case, I actually was like, okay, I want to do product management work, but at the same time, I'm a little bit open to everything because there's a lot of roles out there that most people don't realize exist. Like I didn't even know solutions architect existed until I came in and I was like, huh. This recruiter reached out to me about this role and it's very similar to what I did at Accenture. The only difference is that you're working at the product company and you're not working at a consulting firm. You're still solving problems, you're still working with people, you're still working with product, you're still implementing and you at the same time are shuffling feedback or in this case even making changes internally to be able to do something like that. So. I thought that was really cool to be able to work with that because you get to see actual impact. You get to see it in live. And a lot of times something like Workday, honestly, most people don't know unless you work at a company that uses Workday, then you're like, oh, Christine did that. But on the financial side of things, only people that really work with that is like accounting teams, finance teams. The only part you really probably have seen is like expenses. <laughs> and that's only if you have expenses. But on the other hand, I love an external facing product like Google Shopping and Google Hotels because you could literally like look it up and you're like, yeah, I did that. Christine did that. And I like love that kind of validation that like I did that. So that was really what I was looking for is not only just like the tangible aspect that like I did that, but also that I have some kind of impact to bring to the product team and make a change, which I was able to do a few times for at least like hotels. So. Now I first started off when I went into this role, uh, when I applied for this role, it was just like advertising solutions architect. I did not know what the role was until later on. I heard it was about shopping and I'm like, okay, that kind of makes sense given my background in retail um, and in e-commerce. So, okay, I was able to work with that. And I did know the industry enough to be able to get all the lingo and understand how the industry works. Even I myself has like done an e-commerce product management internship at her campus when I was in college. So. I had an idea of like how e-commerce would work and also the kind of work that goes into it. My mom also was in retail too because she had like her own gift shop. So for me specifically, I came in for just shopping and then a year later, I actually was like, oh, you know, I kind of want more challenge. So at first I thought they're gonna give me a new product area. Instead, they came me in, at first I thought they're gonna just give me like more difficult clients or more high impact clients. No, they ended up giving me hotels, which is now a whole different product area altogether. It's in a whole different industry altogether and a whole different beast. So at the time our team was only like, I think two people were working on hotel ads. And even those two people were like half hop, half hotels, half shopping. So no one's like truly 100% on hotels because it's not big enough for us to have a whole team on that. So what we ended up doing was that guy ended up going 100% shopping and he was training me to go 50% on hotels. We essentially swapped paces. Um, and so we, I was essentially taking a lot of the big hotel clients that you probably know today. Um, so that work honestly was so fulfilling because you get to work with, it's a good and a bad thing because with shopping, there's a lot of retailers and so naturally you get to work with a lot of retailers, but they're not necessarily the big ones that you may have heard of. But at least my clients, if I said it, you would have known them. On the other hand, hotels, 
There's literally just the two of us for a mayor. So if I tell you all of them, you will definitely recognize all of them as well. They're worldwide. Um, it's just that their sales team is here in a mayor. So that's why I'm on that team. So those have such high impact because when you are pretty much own half the business in the US or in a mayor, then you pretty much get a lot of cool work. So a lot of times I had to learn a whole new platform. So before we had Merchant Center and now we have Hotel Center, the way that the data flows, the whole ecosystem is a little bit different. The product area is a little bit different. Even the way that the teams are structured are different. The other thing is like even the product maturity is very different too. So for shopping, it's very mature to the point where there's a lot of work going on and there's a lot of movement all the time. With hotel ads, it's a much smaller product, it's much smaller team, so very scrappy in some kind of ways. So I actually liked the work I do more with hotels for that same reason, that I can just message someone, I can get something done, I can go on a call and be able to talk to literally everyone that's working on something. It felt more like a startup versus shopping. It's more of like you're being talked at or like you have to follow a procedure, fill out a form, send out an email. Um, so it's like basically like a true big corporate big corporation, which is interesting because in a company like Google, you would think it's like, oh, both of them are going to be treated that way. No, in this case, the product maturity for hotel ads is like very low. Um, so there's a lot of room that we could do there, but there's just not a lot of innovation because of the fact that like, what could we possibly do for like 10 clients? And when I say that, it really is like they're the biggest clients. There's like, of course, millions of clients out there, but we just only focus on specifically like the top. So in that case, like a lot of the product innovation actually comes from the clients for hotels versus on shopping side. It's really like built from go to market or products or like what the market thinks and like what Google thinks. And that's how the innovation is driven on the shopping side. While on the client side for what well, on the hotel side is really actually driven by the clients. Since we don't have that many big players, we like it's like so hard to be able to tell if something's going to succeed or not until we know for sure a client really wants it. So a lot of times those are a lot more innovative. They always say like, we want to do X, Y, Z. And we're like, oh, we can't do that, but let's see what we can do. Those are the, my most interesting times where I actually love it. Like I know a lot of times people are just like, oh my God, it's another workaround. I have to like push back. I actually enjoy the challenge because it's just exactly what I said. I wanted to have that product impact. And so in this case, I'm trying to figure out what can we possibly do, what we currently have in our current infrastructure. And then if I can make a case study off of it, we can be able to propel this into a bigger product. A lot of times we actually have things like that that ended up being propelled off of what an actual hotel partner has told us. So that's the work that I've done for both of them. To give you a little bit more, more in depth about like what my actual role, I talk about it here, but specifically, basically I solve problems for clients with implementations or basically helping them out fixing their issues through an implementation. Uh, but at the team, so I would say that like cons compared to when I was consulting at Accenture, which that was like more like 90% external, 10% internal. Uh, here at Google, it's like 50-50. So I'm doing like 50% internal, 50% external. And through the work that I'm doing, I'm sharing in, I'm sharing a lot of uh, like lessons learned and a lot of sharings and a lot of learnings that I'm doing externally, internally to be able to do things that we want to do externally. Vice versa, we do have a lot of internal OKRs that we call it, that we have to do internally that may or may not even be related to client work. But a lot of the work is just like built in to do. We're not only just employees, we're not only just consultants of the clients, we're also employees of Google. So we have to do both of our work. And I like that because you get to do both internal work and external work. It's a lot more interesting compared to just 100% or 90% external. So there's a lot more of a culture at Google specifically for that. Like you get to feel like you're get a part of a bigger thing. You're not necessarily so detached that you're just doing client work. Um, but at the same time, it does depend on the ecosystem of the work you're doing. So in this case, it's like shopping is very mature. And then hotels, it's like not as mature. Not all people know about it. They kind of know about it if you show them, but they don't know exactly how it works. That's the kind of work that I do. Um, and so long term, I've actually done a lot of one on ones this past year just to figure out what I think I might want to do. I have heard about like a product operations manager. I spoke to two of them. They're essentially like in between the eng and product and us. So in this case, like the client facing role. So 
I thought that was really cool because there is definitely like the product lead, which is like in between go to market and product and eng. I didn't want to be a little bit more on the sales side, but I wanted to be more on the operational side. So in that case, like working with product and eng, and then also working with like people like me, um, and also like basically client facing people. So I personally think that might be my next step, but I do want to spend another two to three years in this current role, get promoted, and then maybe consider after that. But at least I know what's out there. Um, but like just basically my big advice for you if you're interested in going to tech is like be very open-minded about the title that you're going for a lot of people go for like i want to be a data scientist i want to be a data analyst i want to be a product manager but there's just so many roles out there you just focus on probably the very simple ones that everyone knows about but there's a lot of like these random roles that pop up that technically do what you want it's just a different name that you've never heard of before so Keep open-minded. I did not know about Solutions Architect. Definitely check out the video here. Definitely check out the video here on like me comparing the two and also like what I actually think a Solutions Architect does because technically the title itself is different than what I actually do because if you think about Solutions Architect, they're technically more troubleshooting in some kind of ways, but we're more like Solutions Consultants than we are Solutions Architects. So. Let me know what you think down below. What do you think about my journey? What do you think I should do next? Because I don't think I will go back to consulting after I found out you could do consulting at a tech company, which by the way, Workday does do consulting. I just did not want to go to Pleasanton. They don't have any offices here in New York to uh, do consulting. So I was like, no, that's out of the question. But that, that have definitely came across my head. I just don't want to do that. <laughs> so for me specifically, I think I'm going to just stay at Google or in tech in general, and I still just have those three principles I need, which is work-life balance, be able to have some kind of impact to the product, but also work with people. So those three, as long as I have it, I'm happy. I'm ho ho hoping to get promoted and then hoping to move laterally in some point and be able to still get those three and challenge myself. But right now, I've started off with shopping, doing hotels, and I have a few projects that I'm trying to do as well that have kicked off as well. So I think those are going to be good for me. Um, so really, like, let me know down below what you think. Do you have any questions on how I did certain things? A lot of the videos that I have currently on my channel do go into depth. So if you have a question about it, um, I could definitely send you to the correct video where it goes into even more in depth because like, I can only go to so much detail on the, de on the actual comments. So thank you so much and see you next time. Bye.